and this attaches to a chainsaw as well. Um, this unit right here costs $800, and in terms of cutting panels, it's set up kind of backwards because in order to use it, manufactured in a lot of different shapes and sizes, you'll find them priced anywhere between, uh, on the cheap side, maybe $250, all the way up to about $550 in that neighborhood, okay? Where can, where can we buy those out? Connor Industries in Perry Sound will make them up for you. And I got a whole, whole shelf full of them. Oh, nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Shelf full. So we put these quick, and that every time awesome. I go make another batch of them, awesome. I add a couple of improvements. Good man. The improvements that we've done to the latest batch is the um, markings are not on the inside where they're hard to see, they're up on the top, and this is cut on an angle. Power plane is the perfect tool for taking off the eighth of an inch off the edge of a panel as opposed to grabbing something like this and trying to take an eighth of an inch off. And trust me, you'd rather spend a couple of minutes on the ground with a power plane beveling your material than up in the air, 40 feet dangling off of a roof somewhere, trying to get panels to come together that don't want to because you haven't taken the time on the ground. <coughs> Notice also that when we uh, make sure we have the cheap uh, uh, extension available, it extends our ability to run a wire chase through those panels. And the hole saws, good three, four inch, all the way up to six inch hole saws will work with these when we start doing the electrical work. Right? Um, also, when we get into electrical, of course, we like to use flex bits. Mm. The flex bit's about a $40 item and allows us to run a chase that much further through the panel. All right? Keep a hat full of that. Because a lot of our electrical chases are coming up through plates, down through the floor system, and there's inevitably nails or screws or something in the way, we want to use a good, strong ship auger's bit that will cut through that, and a, a whole hog is typically something that will run those uh, holes through there very quickly. When it comes to uh, attaching panels together, we're typically going to be using an eight penny round head, not a clipped head nail. Um, most common spacing on this is going to be six inch on center. Pneumatic fasteners is the only way to go. You, I know somebody that tried to hand nail their entire house package and they were hating life after half a day. It just didn't make any sense at all. We use um, uh, the pass load impulse guns because there's nothing worse than climbing around on a roof with a bunch of hoses and extension cords and everything else. So if we can go cordless up on the roof, we're more than happy to do so. You'll find that we use both regular cordless drill drivers as well as the, uh, the small cordless impact drivers. The impact drivers work very nice. They're lighter. They're easier to hold on to and use up on the roof. Using this aluminum bar as our guide, our depth guide, because when it heats up, it tends to slide somewhat. So what we use is we'll use pipe or uh, hose clamps. Get the smallest hose clamp that they sell, attach it to the shaft right here, and the part with the screw mechanism is to the outside. You can also do this. All right. The number one tool that I've talked about before that a the panel store is going to have is ratchet straps. Heavy duty ratchet straps are the way to go. Anybody that isn't familiar with how to operate ratchet straps needs to take a couple of moments and make sure that they understand how to operate them so when they're up on the roof, they're not fussing around with them. Screws back out, we only take them as far back out so that they unhook from the panel, but the screws stay with the plate. Also use as installers what we refer to as spoons or panel spoons. And these work very well because of this flat bar. It allows us to get in there between lumber and the edge of a panel skin and tweak it or pry it together so that when we're pulling panels together, inevitably you've got something that binds and doesn't want to come together. This is for the young guys. This is for me because it's lighter, okay? It doesn't weigh me down as much. And on the edge of your template, and you run right around, you're cutting out your electrical box just that quick. Once you cut that out, pop it out with your chisel or the screwdriver, and you're ready to go.
where not only are we using a lot of panel masking, but that's when we started using things like sill seal. That's just this simple low grade sill seal, which works beautifully to stop air. And if we want to go a little bit further afield, that's when we go with a premium grade sill seal. This material's got a release paper, so it's got a sticky back to it. When we lay that on top of a gable wall, we know that it's not coming off. All right? And it comes pretty thick. So once you put that on there, for a flat or a butt joint in the field of your roof, just peel it back and three inches to either side and you're sealed up. It also comes in 12 and 16 inch. One panels are going to be the single component, the two component. Tomorrow we'll go through using a lot of this material on site. The two component foam again is an A and a B polyol and isocyanurate. It uses the gun and a different type of nozzle. You'll notice that the nozzle has swirling or mixing chambers that mixes the two together and what comes out the end is, is uh, fully ready to start curing. Okay.